Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from John chapter 10. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So one of my favorite songs when I was a youth was by The Cure. It's called A Forest. And although uh, members of that band would surely not describe it in this way, I had to laugh this week when I was thinking about how to tell you about this song, and I was thinking that it was something of a modern Gothic retelling of the Greek hero Odysseus, And the sirens call, their enchanting and treacherous song, threatening to lead him and his crew off course into certain danger. I hear her voice calling my name, the song goes. The sound is deep in the dark. I hear her voice and start to run into the trees, into the trees. But suddenly I stop, but I know it's too late. I'm lost in a forest all alone. The girl was never there. It's always the same. I'm running towards nothing again and again and again and again. In its despairing way, this song speaks to us in the fact that there are all kinds of voices out there. Jesus warns us some of those voices would lead us in helpful ways, and some of those voices would lead us to harm, intentionally or not. Very truly, I tell you, he says, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. See, there are good voices to follow, and there are harmful voices. And Jesus leads us to safety, but how can we know his voice? These days, there is so much concern, so much anxiety and so much confusion. How do we know which voice is helpful and which voice is harmful? You know, when this pandemic first set in upon us, I marveled with uh, several of my friends over how quickly people Um, settled into it, how quickly people seem to pay attention, for the most part, 
and practice the things that we need to do to take care of ourselves and each other. All, uh, it seemed to me, with something of a spirit of cooperation, a feeling that we were in this together, looking after each other, taking precautions for each other. And in time, I wonder if we are losing some of that spirit. It's human nature, I know, that over time people will get impatient. Different leaders will tell us different things about the best course of action forward and why we've even seen some of our people uh, even protesting the very measures that have been taken to protect them. There's talk of reopening things as things do reopen. How do we know what's safe, what's wise for us and others, and what's best? And I'm not saying there's one right way uh, now either, and that uh, all the other uh, voices are wrong. But, you know, many of our folks are quite isolated and lonely these days. Many of our own congregants are. And I wonder, I think about the voices that they are hearing. When we don't hear many voices in our lives, the ones that we do take greater, uh, have a, a greater effect on us. And when the few voices we hear are anxious or scared or sharing misinformation, I think about them a lot. There are many voices out there. So how do we know which voices are helpful for us? How do we find together the best course to follow? And you know, for the church, it's not going to be easy. It hasn't been easy adjusting to uh, worshiping without people in the pews and sending it out to you each week. Um, as we determine a path to move forward, as we're able to slowly start gathering again, how do we do that? How do we decide when it's okay to do that? It's going to probably be slow in returning to more normal activities for the church, and we'll be prayerfully considering what is best and wise. Please do bear with us as we adjust, and we won't necessarily know week to week but we will do our best to keep you informed. And I don't know about you, but I have a bit of, of what I've been calling adjustment fatigue. Everything just seems to take longer and take much more effort than it used to, doesn't it? But I digress. How do we know in the midst of so many voices around us, which of those voices are helpful for us? And how can we find and hear the voice that is most helpful, the Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. If we hear and know Jesus' voice, he says, then we are his sheep. My sheep know my voice. And so I want to suggest to you that this is a very good time for us to practice knowing and recognizing the voice of Christ. Now it's hard sometimes in the midst of so many other voices that are clamoring for our attention to recognize Christ's voice. The world is distracting and confusing oftentimes. So let me give you a little bit of reassurance even in these difficult times. First of all, I want to remind you that just last week we read about two of Jesus' followers who on Easter Sunday though they'd heard the rumors of his resurrection, weren't ready to believe, weren't able to believe, who were walking on the way to a village outside of Jerusalem called Emmaus. We talked about that last week. We read that passage together. Do you remember how Jesus came alongside them and walked with them and was, was walking with them for some miles and talking to them about the scriptures and the prophecies and what Christ came to do and to be for them? And how at the end of it all, they came to realize that it was Jesus walking with them. And they asked each other, weren't our hearts on fire while he talked with us? You see, when Jesus is in our midst, when Jesus is talking to us, there will be something happening within us. Our spirits will call out 
are yearning to hear from Christ. And so when the voice of Jesus is speaking to us, there will be something within us yearning to hear and know what it says. That's one way that you can know that Christ is telling you something in the midst of your situation. And we have to stop and listen and pray about it and sometimes even check with a brother or sister in Christ to confirm that we are hearing correctly. But when that is going on within you, that there's a yearning and a burning to hear what is going on, to hear Christ speak, then Christ probably is speaking to you. Second, I want you to notice something interesting that happens in our passage. Jesus begins our passage in John talking about how he is the good shepherd. But notice at a certain point, he starts talking about himself as the gate. I always wondered about that. Why does Jesus change the metaphor? Why does he change the image that he's referring to about himself? Well, when we look carefully at the passage in John, we realize that Jesus changes his language because the people weren't understanding. They were listening and they were hearing, but they weren't able to understand what he was telling them. So he tried again. Do you see that? That Jesus will continue to speak to us and will keep trying until he reaches us, until we can understand, until we're able to follow. Jesus will keep calling out for you to listen. So let us do that. Let us listen now for the wisdom, the shalom, the peace that comes upon us when we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, of the gate to an abundant and eternal life. For that is our Lord. And that is where His voice will take us. So listen and keep listening because Christ won't give up trying to reach you. And practice listening, friends, because it is those who know Christ's voice from all the others who belong to Him. Amen.